Thank you for joining us today. Uh, in this session, um, we will talk about uh, Spire. My name is uh, Agustin Martini Fasho. Um, I am part of the HPE security engineering team, and I am a uh, maintainer of the Spire project. I'm here with Marcos. Okay. Hello, I'm Marcos. Uh, I am uh, working on HPE security engineering team too, and I am another of the maintainer of Aspire. Okay, um, so we will be providing an introduction of Aspire, and also we will be doing a deep dive into the, the new Windows support that we just released. Um, so uh, we will do an introduction to Aspire. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we will first talk about uh, Spiffy. We will do a quick overview of Spiffy. Uh, then we will look into the uh, basic component of the uh, Spire architecture. Um, we will talk a little bit about uh, the adoption of Spire. And then uh, we will start talking about uh, the new Windows support. Uh, we will see what are the difference between running uh, Spire on Windows and on Linux. Uh, we will see how the development experience looks like. And finally, we will see a demo of uh, Spire uh, running on Windows. Uh, this is the, the first time that uh, we will see Spire running on Windows in a conference, so looking forward to that. Okay, uh, so let uh, start uh, talking about Spiffy. Um, Spiffy is a set of open source standards um, that they all share uh, the same common goal, uh, that is to, able, to be able to securely identify uh, workloads no matter where they are running. Um, in order to do that, uh, we need uh, to represent an ID or uh, to provide uh, IDs. And for that, we have the Spiffy ID. That is uh, a representation of an identity. We can see that uh, this is how a Spiffy ID looks like. Um, it is a, a URI that has the Spiffy scheme, the authority component, is what we call a trust domain. A trust domain in Spiffy defines security boundaries. So um, if one trust domain is compromised, uh, that shouldn't affect a different trust domain. And you may run uh, a trust domain for development, for example, and a different trust domain for production that will uh, set the, the boundaries there. And finally, the path part of a Spiffy ID of this URI identifies a specific workload within a trust domain. So, but Spiffy uh, is not only about uh, Spiffy IDs. We also need uh, some kind of document or place where we can actually put that ID uh, and be able to verify it. And for that, the Spiffy standards define what we call a Spiffy verifiable identity document, or SVID. Um, we can think of an SVID uh, like a, a passport, uh, in the same way that in a passport you have your identity there, and there is a way that you, uh, the identity can be verified. In an SVID, um, you have the, the Spiffy ID that is the identity, and also, uh, you can, uh, it is cryptographically verifiable. So that's good. We have uh, a way to represent an identity. We also have a document that can hold that identity. But we also need a way to retrieve that identity. And for that, we have the Workload API. The Workload API is the API that Spiffy defines uh, for the workloads. Um, to be able to fetch their identity. Um, and finally, we have what we call the Spiffy Trust Bundle. And the Spiffy Trust Bundle will allow us um, 
to verify those identities within a, a, a trust domain because they, what they are, they are a set of public keys uh, of that trust domain. So let's look into a little bit more about uh, the Workflow API. Uh, the Workflow API has an important attribute uh, that is that it is not authenticated. Uh, um, so workflows uh, don't need to have any kind of secret or password in order to call it. Uh, they will get an identity based on a, a workload attestation mechanism. So the workload just call the workflow API and they will get their SBIT. Um, the SBIT can be uh, in two format. There is one format that is the X509 SBIT that is uh, basically an X509 certificate. Um, there is also a token-based uh, SBIT that is the JOT SBIT. So those are the two formats that we have for the SBITs. Okay, now that we know at least a little bit about the SPP, we can start talking about the Spire. Um, the Spire is a production ready implementation of the SPP standards, and it is open source also. With the Spire, uh, I would say that the main goal is to be able to issue SBITs to to the workloads as in many places as we can. In order to do that, it implements two kinds of attestation mechanisms, the node attestation and the workload attestation. And it has two main components, that is the server and the agent. So let's look a little bit deeper in, into this architecture. <coughs> we can see here the Spire, the Spire agent uh, that has plugins. Both the, the agent and the server uh, are made of plugins, uh, and that provides Spire uh, an architecture that is pretty flexible, that allows you to uh, grow depending on the needs. Like, for example, if there is a new platform or vendor that you want to support. Um, a, a new specific plugin can be written for that uh, platform. And the agent is the one that implements the workload API, that the workloads <coughs> call in order to get their SBITs through a workload attestation mechanism. And we also have the server that also implements uh, plugins and has the server APIs that allows uh, the, to manage the server. And the agents call the server in order to get their identities also, <coughs> and uh, they go through a node attestation mechanism. And I wanted to include here in this architecture also the data store. Um, the server obviously needs to store some, some data uh, what is important to know for, for this presentation is that in the data store uh, is stored what we call the registration entries. Um, and the registration entries uh, are the entries that really describes the workloads. Uh, and they have uh, the attributes of what we call the selectors that describe the workloads. And that will allow us to uh, issue the identity depending on the discovered selectors. And that information is stored in the data store. <coughs> okay, so at this point you may wonder if uh, adopting Inspire is a good idea for you or for your organization or company. Let's try to see what, what are the problems that Inspire solves and try to figure that out. So if you're maybe struggling with issuing workload identities to workloads uh, because maybe because they are running in different platforms or you have workloads running on-prem and in the cloud. Uh, looks like Inspire is a very good fit for that because uh, it can issue platform agnostic identities in an automated way. 
Um, also, if you are implementing uh, a system where you need maybe mutual TLS, TLS and establish trust between different software systems, uh, Inspire is also designed for that. Um, and we saw that it uh, manages both, both the, the platform and the workload the station, um, and it coordinates the issuance of the certificate and rotation. So Spirely, Spire is, uh, is designed to uh, renew the certificates even if they are short-lived. Uh, typically, certificates in Spire uh, may uh, expire in, a, in one hour, and uh, Spire can, can handle that. Uh, and if you uh, maybe want to compare or want to see what other organizations uh, have been doing with this, with Spire, how, how, how they have been adopting Spire. Uh, you can look at the adopters MD document that we have uh, in the Spire repo. You will see there are many different uh, examples of uh, the adoption of Spire with different use cases uh, and how Spire is being used. Right, so let's get into the new Windows support. <coughs> um, the Windows support is being introduced as an experimental feature. What that really means is that we do expect that we will be learning uh, how Spire is uh, operated and deployed. Uh, so we expect to make changes along the way uh, that may impact the, 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 the user experience and the functionality that you, uh, you see in the first release. Um, you will be able to run both the server and the agent on Windows. Uh, we did work to adapt existing plugins and also uh, created a new plugin that is the Windows Workload Attester that is able to attest uh, Windows Workload based on Windows specific uh, attributes or selectors. <coughs> um, and the, the plugin that we have updated uh, is the Docker Workload Attester. Um, we will see how that works uh, in the demo. Um, so one of the guiding principles that we have in Inspire is to try to make it as easy as operate and configure as possible. Uh, with that in mind, uh, we didn't uh, introduce uh, a lot of changes in the way that you can run Inspire on Windows. Uh, only some minimal uh, configuration changes are needed uh, that are very like platform specific uh, related. Uh, for example, um, instead of using uh, Unix domain <coughs> sockets, you will be using named pipes on Windows. Uh, okay, so let's see a little bit about what's the development experience uh, on Windows. We have been using the MSYS2 building platform and it has been working pretty well. Uh, again, building Inspire on Windows has pretty much the same experience as uh, with using Linux. Uh, the same makefile is used, so uh, if you are already familiar with the makefile uh, targets, you can run them and get the same experience. And now we have the demo. Marcus, okay. Already. Okay. My turn. Is it working? Okay. Uh, in this demo today, I'm going to demonstrate how we can use Spire to provide identities in a Windows environment. Here in this DRM, we have all the <coughs> sorry services we will be using and starting. We will have an Spire server and agent that are running in a Windows host, together with the products API that will talk a uh, request stitch. Uh, to the Spire agent using the Workload API. This product API will have an entry that is configured to work with the Windows Attestor. In the other side, we will have uh, two services running in different containers, the web app and the customer API. Each of them will communicate with the Spire agent through the Workload API and fetch bits using entries that have Docker's Attestor selectors. Okay. Uh, before that, 
the web app uh, will connect with the product API, API using immediately less using the certificates they got. Let's move to see some configuration files. Mm -hmm. Here is the configuration file for our, win, uh, for our server. As you can see, there are no difference with the version of Union on, uh, we use on Linux, except for the experimental flag for named pipe. Here, the server will be connecting to, will be listening to TLS connection on port 8081. It's configured to use the trust domain example.org. That means that all the speeds we created for, from this server will have that trust domain. Here we have the mentioned uh, experimental flag to set a different named pipe. That named pipe will be used for local calls to the uh, server API or for in case we uh, use for the admin uh, entries. And here I, am, I choose to use as no selector the X590 pop. This one is the one that will validate the identity of the agent. And we provide a CA that is used to validate the certificate that the agent will provide us to verify its identity. Let me move to the agent config file. The config file is connecting with the Spire server in port 881, has the same trust domain, and set a name it pipe name for the world of API. Here, again, we are using X590 pop with the configured certificate that it will present. As I have mentioned, uh, we'll be using the, for attestation of the world logs, the Docker and the Windows attestors. Before I start running things, I will display you the configuration of the Docker Compose, this part. We have two uh, containers, services, sorry. The customer API that use an image called customer API and is mounting the name API that will be used to talk with the World Lot app API. The image, uh, the web app is almost the same. We have an image that it's called web app and is connected. It's mounting the name it pipe and is listening in port 8080. That is enough about configuration. Sorry. I will start our agent and our server. Uh, for this demo, I created some scripts uh, that will that will be useful for, for everything, to create entries, to start server. All, all these scripts are, are online uh, in my repo. They will be displayed uh, after we finish, but uh, you can take it, take it and verify. So I will start server and our agent. Here we see that the server started successfully. It is listening in port 881 for TLS connections. It's, it's listening in the name and pipe we provide for local calls. And here we see that our agent was able to attest and it provides an SPFI ID. That SPFI ID is important because it's the parent of all the entries we will create in today because uh, the server will provide a, a, a speech to the agents that have the expected uh, SPFI ID. Here, in the Asian side, we, we see that it is, was able to test, got this bit, uh, the SPFID I displayed above, and it's listening in the name by uh, we configure. <laughs> to make all these services to be able to attest, we need, we need uh, entries. So I will create them. For this demo, in total, we have three entries. One is for our web app that has as parent ID the speed ID of the agent which has started. It has a TTL of 60 seconds. It is unreal. Uh, 
it's not useful to have a speed with this amount of time, but it's just for a demo to make things uh, rotate uh, faster. The selectors are both of, for Docker, a tester. In this case, it is expecting that the process that is calling the workload API have the image ID web app, that is the, our first case, and the label Docker Compose Service web app. In case of our customer API, it's almost the same, the same parent, same GTL, but the difference here is that it is uh, expecting for customer API and for Docker Compose Service customer API. The difference here in, is the next one, that is the product API. That is this one. As you see here, it is running in the window host. So we are not able to use the Docker attestor there, and we are using the Windows attestor. In this case, uh, the process that are running for the user name administrator, we get this speed. For this demo, I choose a, a simple uh, selectors. But if you move to the documentation on Inspire, you can see the complete list of uh, selectors which we are able to use. In case of Docker, we have the label that we are using, environment variables, and image ID. In case of Windows, we are supporting user security ID, username, and different selectors related with groups. It is possible to add new selectors if we want, it's depending on the requirements. For now, we choose these ones. Now, we have our server nation running and our entries. I will start our services. I will start the Docker Compose and the products API. You can make some time. But here, we can see that the, pro the products API was able to communicate with the agent and fetch an speed, which speed ID is products API. In the case of customer, it was able to communicate to and get an SPFI ID that is customer API. The same thing happens with web app. It was able to communicate and get a speed with SPFI ID web app. Now that we have all created, I will move to browser and loading the web app. I spent a lot of time writing those CCS. It was stressful. However, for us, it's enough. Uh, we are getting the products, the products and the customers. That means that the web app was able to do a successful mutual connection with uh, products and with customers. For this demo, I, I am not only validating the speeds, but I am validating the speed ID that, for example, web app is getting from the products API. If you go to the code, you will see that we are expecting the speed ID products API. So, to demonstrate how Spire is propagating uh, Speed, I created another script that I will, be, I will use to update the Speed ID of Products API. I wish I had a you. And run that, that script. So it is updated here, and as soon as it's updated, and I reload the page, I see that our connection between web app and product start failing because it has a new switch that is unsupported for this web app. Uh, that is because there are two ways to where the agent get a new switch. In case of the entry, I received some changes. For example, I updated the bit, or in cases it is about expire, expire. So in this case, I use the, the update one. I will be a little more aggressive now. And instead of oh, instead of uh, updating an speed ID, I will update a selector for our web app. Another you. So as soon as it is updated and I move to logs, 
I will start seeing that the communication between, not the communication, the agent is not longer able to provide its bits to the web app. And the error is permission denied, no identity issued. You will ask me, why is this happening? In the process of attestation, uh, when the process is calling our agent, we calculate using different queries to kernel, APIs, we calculate, inform we get information about that process. For example, who is uh, running it in case of the username, uh, in case of Docker, the image ID, the different information we want. And with that, all that information, we compare it uh, in the attestation process with the, uh, all the entries, and that, that entry have uh, all the selectors we want. In this case, because I updated the level to another one, that is not long, it is not longer possible. And it starts failing. If I move to the server, so, sorry, to the web app, and if it passes time, remember, it, I put a spatial time of just 60 seconds. So in the time I was talking, the speed is expired, and we start getting the error in the connection. If we go to the error, we will see that it's because the speed is expired, it's not possible to use a muted TLSTR. To make it worse again, I can just get the selector to its previous state. So we have it again, and if we go to logs and wait for some seconds, because there are retry here, we see that the connection is working again. So it was able again to fetch its bits. So that is that quick demo about running on Windows. Austin, do you want the next one? Yeah, OK. That was good. <coughs> well, uh, if you are interested, maybe in contributing uh, to Aspire, uh, you can join our community. Uh, we are always um, available at the Slack, uh, both Marcos uh, and myself, and the other Spire maintainers. Um, you can visit the spiffy.io website, obviously the, the spiffy and Spire uh, repo, where you can uh, browse through the code base. Um, and um, uh, right now, the demo that you uh, just saw, uh, it is in Marcos Fork. Uh, we will work to, uh, to get that uh, work also upstream. Uh, and uh, you can uh, download the Spiffy book. Uh, there you, you will find a lot more information about how to operate uh, and deploy Spire. Um, that's it. Uh, No errors, so <laughs> that is was, was successful. <laughs> I think we, we may have some time for a couple of questions. Sure. No microphone or nothing. Uh, uh, okay. I, I, there, there. Sit down. Hey, so I missed the beginning of the talk story for the potentially stupid question. You mentioned that there was some extra work needed for the Docker workload the tester on Windows. I work on ContainerD on Windows and would like to know if there's anything we could do to help you in that. Could you please that? Uh, I think that at, at this point, yeah, yeah, it was a little bit challenging to, to get uh, the information, the, like the same kind of information that we, we got, uh, like running containers on Linux. And on Windows. Marcos was the one that implemented the, the Docker uh, workload tester. Maybe you, so, you want yes. to explain uh, something? Basically, uh, if you take a look to how uh, the tester works on Linux, we depends on the C groups. In case of Windows, that does not exist. But exists a replacement that is the object uh, shops. That object shops has uh, as name uh, this container ID. So what basically we're doing now is verifying uh, between the list of shops if the process we are getting, the call, is running with that shop. If that shop is successful, 
and we are able to, with that ID, we are able to communicate with the Docker uh, API and get all the information we need. But the process there is, the, yeah. the challenge there was how to get the, uh, the uh, Docker, the Docker ID that is running in that process. Yeah. Maybe I, I, if I remember correctly, the most challenging part was that we didn't have like a, a single API call that we could call to like yes. uh, from a process ID to get the, the job information. Yeah, yes. Is that uh, we need to do several calls to several places to be able to get so, just the shop. And with the shop, then we, there, are, there is a, a kernel function that is, is processing shop. I can't remember the name right now, but we use that to validate. But the hard part is <laughs> getting the, all the shops to verify that. Uh, that like if, 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 there, if there would a way uh, to simplify that process, maybe that, that would be a great, a great improvement. Yes, yeah, will be great. If you, if, you look at the, if you look at the code, you will see that there are a lot of different calls there, and a, a loop, and these different things that uh, we, we did. Maybe there is a, a simple way to do that. So, so if a container be exposed that ID, you mean it would just work? Or container mm -hmm. only? The container on Windows is post ID. Container D, instead of. Ah, okay. Uh, in the case of container D, I need to verify. I need uh, to run things there. Uh, but that is one of the next steps. Uh, container D, because uh, there are people that are asking for container D on Linux, so we want to have that one on Windows too. Uh, so that's something we will be working for sure. Uh, so, yes, just talk to me and we can work together there. There are no issues. Oh, no problem. Okay. More questions? No? Does he has the microphone or? <laughs> <laughs> Any limit on the host operating system? I mean, Windows 10 Pro will be sufficient to run this demo? Sorry? Sorry. Uh, when, uh, when the, the host operating system yes. is a uh, Windows Server, what version? Yeah, Windows Server, but uh, I run it on Windows, uh, on Windows 11 and Word 2. Okay. But in, my, in this demo, I was using Windows Server 2022, I think. That is the last one. Mm -hmm. Because the image I built was there. You can take a look to the image and you can change the image because the, all the code to generate the image is in the demo. So you can change the version if you want. Any uh, results in, I mean, performance results to put how quick you are? <laughs> Did yeah. you do any measurements? Uh, uh, we, we haven't done yet. Yeah, but interesting in, in, in that also. Yes. Yes, one of the next steps too is making it work on uh, Kubernetes. Then it will be more challenging because there are some several limitations there, but that is the next step and make name it pipe uh, to work in different language because right now it's supporting only on for GPC on Windows and in .NET. No more questions? Any other questions? Okay, okay we are good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you all.